What are you making now, Daddy? Hello everyone. This video is a compilation of several short videos showing a few of the um, little projects I've been up to recently. I've not had much time to do any major projects and I just thought I'd give you an update of what I've been up to. We've got making and using a branding iron, a bit of wet turning of a U-log and a bit more bronze casting and uh, creating a verdigris patina on bronze. This first video is inspired by uh, Heath Knuckles. Um, I'll give a link to his um, channel. Uh, he does some great videos, but he recently made a, a brand um, for branding his logo onto wood, and it inspired me to make one. So I had an extra brass stamp made um, specifically for this purpose. And in this video, I'm showing how I create a uh, brass insert to replace the soldering tip in this um, heavy duty 100 watt soldering iron. Here I'm just checking the diameters and I've got a brass bar that's the same diameter. Uh, just checking the alignment of headstock and tailstock using a double ended M2 taper. And uh, these are my zero jaws. I've just put the brass rod in the zero jaws using a little bit of cutting oil. Slow speed on the lathe and an old chisel. Be very careful doing this sort of thing. It's not what the lathe is designed to do. This is at my risk, my project. Just creating a chamfer on the end there. Now I'm test fitting into the soldering iron. Just creating a divot in the end of the brass bar and uh, drilling out with a four millimeter drill bit. Using cutting fluid, yeah, cutting oil again. And taking my time, clearing the swarf regularly. Going in and out until I've got the correct depth. Just clearing away the swarf. Then I'm going to tap a thread using an M5 tap as a 5mm tap, metric thread. I'm turning the chuck by hand and advancing the tailstock by hand. The tailstock is loose and I'm actually pushing it forwards as I turn the uh, chuck by hand. Clearing the swarf again, backing in and out with the tap, using a bit of cutting fluid. Here I'm test fitting the uh, threaded rod that came with my brass stamp. Just checking it all fits. Going to shorten that rod. And there it is all screwed together. Forming a replacement insert for the soldering iron or soldering iron if you're in the US. And there we are, fits nicely. Very pleased with that. I'm just doing a test, test burn on a piece of old plywood. Great result. Here I'm putting it to the test. It's a really simple project. This is a sled I made because um, I don't possess a table saw. So it's a sled for my band saw. It's just a way of squaring up the ends of stock. This is a piece of uh, American white oak. And I'm just uh, neatening up the edges, getting it to size, cutting off that knot. Just using the fence at this stage. Here I want my sanding machine smoothing edges and rounding edges and corners no skill in this very simple project it's just an excuse for using my uh, my new branding tool forcing a bit to cut a hole a finger hole just helps you pick the thing up and then a cabinet scraper to uh, finish the surface gives a beautiful finish now uh, burning my logo onto the breadboard and it works well very pleased with that. Bit of food safe finish. Went a bit mad, covered this breadboard in logos, but I was enjoying my new toy. This next video is wet turning a U log. It's a bit of an experiment. I'm doing full thickness through this log, so it could just crack when it dries. But first of all, I've chiseled out a nice flat area so the faceplate is mounted onto solid wood and not compressible bark. The bark's very loose on this because it was harvested at uh, or cut at the wrong time of year. It was cut um, early summer, so the bark's lifting off before I've even started. Very out of balance. The lathe nearly walked out of my workshop. I'm just taking my time. Slow, got the lathe running quite slowly to begin with and getting it to round. It does take a lot of time. It's quite tiring. Very wet, this wood. I was soaked at the end of it. Uh, and as uh, it gets to round, I can increase the speed gradually. You can see it's just uh, taking shape. 
I was hoping for a more oblong bowl, but uh, the shape of the wood didn't really allow for that. I, I, by the time I'd gone up the sides, it produced quite a round bowl, really. Got my glove on, just protecting my hand a bit, just making sure I'm not going to catch it though on the turning. Got to be very careful wearing gloves around lathes. Sharpening my gouges, it's a big thick gouge, um, half inch. You need something sturdy for doing this sort of work. Here I've taken off quite a bit of stock and I've got the lathe running much faster now. It was really good fun turning this, especially once it was running a bit more true, it was less hard work. I'm approaching it from the other end uh, because I don't want to split out on the end there. I'm not worried about the bark because I'm going to remove that. I've got no chance of keeping the bark on because as I said parts of it are already lifting off from where the uh, tree was felled at the wrong time of year. I turned this over the course of a few days and made sure I wrapped the uh, wood in polythene between turnings to stop it drying and splitting. Also you have to clean the shavings off the bed of your lathe the moment you stop because it will rust it very very quickly. This U corroded it, you know you have mild rust marks very quickly um, with the wet U on the, on the lathe bed. But, uh, just working my way around. Should be noted that you is poisonous, so wash your hands afterwards. Clean your tools as well afterwards with a, an oily rag, just to stop those corroding as well. Make sure you don't leave shavings on those. I then create a dovetail tenon on the uh, bottom of the bowl to reverse it round onto the chuck jaws. I could have probably made a smaller ten and put some smaller jaws on the uh, on the chuck. But uh, here I'm putting the chuck on the lathe and removing the faceplate from the log using my impact driver. Make sure you do up the chuck jaws tight. There will be a bit of compression in wet wood. Starting to hollow it out now. Using the half inch bowl gouge, uh, so a slightly different um, bevel angle on this one, it's 50 degrees, just uh, helps get into the bottom of the bowl. But uh, it's fairly standard, hollowing with a gouge, taking my time, making sure the tools are sharp, checking thicknesses and depths. Uh, you've got to be very careful with uh, these wavy edged bowls, these natural edged bowls, because they're very uneven. Check every time before you start the lathe to make sure that it's not going to catch the um, tool rest or the banjo. Almost done here. The grain on this is amazing, absolutely fantastic. But it is soaking wet, very, very wet. I'm going to leave the walls of this quite thick. Uh, if they're too thin it will distort too much to run it to round when I remount it on the lathe in a few months time. It's going to be packed in wet shavings and uh, left for a few months turning the shavings occasionally. I'm going to scorch the edge in to replace the bark before returning it so it will give a nice black edge to the uh, natural edge. But there's the finished bowl, amazing grain. And here's my box of damp shavings. I'm packing it into the shavings I've just created. And I will rotate the shavings every um, couple of weeks or so. And it should gradually dry it without cracking, hopefully, with a bit of luck. Following my uh, bronze pumpkin casting, I've created a few more moulds of little squashes and baby pumpkins. Some with faces on, some without and I've been uh, casting them in different ways uh, using bronze and some without bronze but I'm using a two part polyurethane resin for these and it's a pre-pigmented black polyurethane resin very easy to use 50-50 mix by weight sets really quick and doesn't create bubbles either or not very easily this is a bra uh, bronze one that I've made it's a hollow one that I'm going to put a lamp inside um, and uh, this is a black polyurethane only one. 
This one I'm going to do some verdigris on. So I'm just polishing up the surface here to expose the bronze. And this is the next part of this video where I'm going to apply this verdigris patina. So there's the, uh, the little squash all polished up and this is an oxidant liquid which you paint on. Here I am painting it on. This reacts with the exposed bronze that I've uh, buffed through. I'm just making sure it's well covered. Gloves on because this stuff's nasty. And it forms a sort of a gel over the surface as it reacts. But I then leave it for a couple of hours. And you can see it goes very green. Uh, so I washed it and scrubbed some of it off to expose some of the bronze again. Just to give it that aged look. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this little montage of videos. And uh, thank you very much to all my subscribers and all the lovely comments. And I shall be back soon. More videos coming soon.